everybody, Mrs. Vodishan here. So today we're going to be learning about chemical bonds, but we're going to be using Animal Crossing to learn it easier. Here's the game Animal Crossing. This is a very fun loving game in which you interact with other characters in your community, you grow your community, um, you get new buildings, you can fish, you can go and get uh, materials to sell. It's just really fun. So we're going to use the characters from Animal Crossing to teach us all about the chemical bonds. We're going to start with ionic bonds. So here we have two separate characters from Animal Crossing. You can see I made one of them sodium and the other one chlorine, and we're going to see how they can form an ionic bond. So first we need to look at the periodic table, and I put them in their spot already. So you can see here we have sodium right here. Sodium, because it's in the alkali family, it does have one valence electron in group one. And you can see over here we have chlorine, and chlorine is a halogen, and because it's in group 17, it has seven valence electrons, and that is indicated right here. Now, we know that every atom really wants a full outer shell in order to be stable or happy, um, so they're looking for a total of eight. Well, this one, sodium, has one, and chlorine has seven. Neither one has eight, but guess what? When they come together, seven plus one equal eight. So this is really like a match made in Animal Crossing Heaven, right? So what they're gonna do is sodium is gonna give that extra valence electron it has because it only has one. So it's gonna gift that one to chlorine. Like, here you go, chlorine, have this one negative electron. And chlorine is gonna have a full outer shell then of eight and it's gonna be completely happy and love this gift, right? Um, so that makes sodium positive now by one because it just gave away a negative. So now it's left being mostly positive by one. Um, and then chlorine now has taken on an, an extra electron. So now it is negative by one. They both become ions. Sodium is now a cation. Chlorine is now an anion, and because negatives attract, or positive and negatives will um, attract each other, so opposites attract, right? They will cling to one another, and they will create an ionic bond. Um, in this case, we end up getting NaCl, which stands for sodium chloride, or in other words, it's going to be regular table salt, okay? So let's look how this um, appears as a Bohr diagram. So you can see sodium over here. Uh, we filled in all of our electrons with these X's. You can see the valence shell has one valence electron while chlorine's valence shell has seven. Okay, and those are represented with the little white dots. So you can see that they're different from one another. Because in ionic bond, there's always a give and a take, okay? So in this case, sodium is giving that extra valence to chlorine Chlorine is taking and accepting it. So what really happens when it uh, um, takes in that extra electron, that's when chlorine becomes negative by one because it has that one extra negative electron. Sodium gave out away. There's nothing left in that outer shell. Because there's nothing left in the outer shell, the outer shell uh, it more or less dissipates. So it disappears, it's no longer there anymore. So what happens is we have the second shell underneath that already has a full octet, a full eight valence electrons. So it's happy and stable too. And it does become positive because it gave away its negative. And like I said before, opposites attract, right? So the positive sodium and the negative chlorine will cling together and form that ionic bond of sodium chloride. Let's go ahead and look at a covalent bond. So here we have two different characters from Animal Crossing. Um, this one is going to be hydrogen, and here we have oxygen, and they are going to form a covalent bond. Covalent bonds are totally different than ionic bonds. In covalent bonds, they actually share electrons, okay? So they're sharing it. There's no longer a give and a take. This isn't present giving anymore, right? Now this is sharing. It's a mutual um, share that they have going on. So here we go. We have hydrogen over here on the periodic table, and this is in group one, therefore it does have one valence electron. And then we have over here oxygen, and oxygen is in group 16, therefore it does have six valence electrons. Well, they both want eight, right? A full octet. Six plus one gives us seven. That's no good. 
we really want to have eight. So look what you can do. This is so awesome. You can have more than one of each, okay? So we're going to have one oxygen, which gives us six valence electrons. But instead of just having one hydrogen to give us seven, let's have a second hydrogen in order. So that's another one. So one plus one plus six equals eight. And that's perfect. That will form a covalent bond. So let's share electrons and then they're gonna go and they're gonna share their electrons and have a wonderful covalent bond. And we end up with H2O. And that two is representing that they, there has to be two hydrogens in our chemical formula in order for this to form a full octet, okay? And only one oxygen. The one is actually understood. You don't have to write it there. Now H2O, is dihydrogen monoxide, or in other words, water, right? So let's look at this in a Bohr diagram. Now we have the hydrogen on the bottom, and the hydrogen, the valence electron, is represented with this plus sign, and the same thing with this one over here. It's represented with this plus sign because they each have one valence, right? And our oxygen, um, their valence electrons are represented with these orange dots, and the orange dots, there's going to be six of them, so what happens when they end up bonding together? You can see there's an overlapping occurring in their valence shell. And that's because that is where the sharing is occurring, that covalent bond sharing of electrons, okay? So because this hydrogen can share its one valent, one valence electron, and one of the valence electrons from oxygen is being shared, hydrogen now has two. And hydrogen really wants to, it only has one shell, and we can only have two valence electrons in the outer shell. So now it is happy and stable. And that's exactly what's happening over here as well. So this hydrogen is only sharing one electron with oxygen, so it has two in its shell, and it is happy and stable as well, because now it is, has a full outer shell. Now oxygen, on the other hand, wants to have eight valence electrons. Well, it already had six, but if it shares this one from this particular hydrogen and this one from this particular hydrogen, all of a sudden it had six, seven, eight. So now it's sharing two, but it has eight total valence electrons in its outer shell. So now it is stable and happy as well. So this is it, you guys. I really hope this was a quick break breakdown of ionic and covalent bonds, and I hope using Animal Crossing really helped you out to learn it. Thanks everybody. So if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button um, so you can see all the new videos I'm posting on Science Explained. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye.